Well, hello and welcome back to my sewing room. Today is number nine in my Sew From Your Stash series and I'm gonna be talking about my crazy quilt paper. So my crazy quilt paper comes in two sizes. This one is my first one and then I had released this size. And what they are is this is 10 by 10 square so that it can go with 10 inch squares and so it can go with 10 inch stackers or layer cakes and this one is five by five and can go with five by five stackers or layer cakes. But first I'm gonna talk about this 10 inch. So in the opening that you saw on my design wall where I had my cozy Christmas quilt. So that's 42 blocks. That's how big the quilt is. It tells you right here with one package of paper you can get a 48 by 56 quilt in a six by seven inch quilt setting. So I made my papers come in 42 pieces so that they could each coordinate with however many you have in your stacker. But of course you can use scraps as well. So this is, this is how it comes, 42 pieces. There's instructions on the back and this is what the paper looks like. <clears throat> so it's freezer paper, so it can be ironed on to each piece. And then after you sew it together, let me just kind of show you one of the blocks. This is kind of how it's sewn together. Then you use the eight and a half inch trim it ruler or any eight and a half inch square ruler to trim it up afterwards. And I'll show you that after, but first I'm gonna just show you how I quickly do the ironing and the cutting, and then later I'll show you how I sew a block together. Now, this one I'm doing in the Jane Austen at home fabric. This is new fabric by Riley Blake, and I'm super excited about it. I love this fabric, and I thought, because it's Jane Austen and because of the style of it, what better thing to do with it than to use my crazy quilt paper? And so I'm pretty excited about how that's gonna look. I'm gonna just kind of lay some blocks out. Whoops, I should have got a bigger design board and laid them on there so you could see, but isn't that gonna be fun? You can lay them however you want. And Maybe at the end I'll get a design board and put four of them on there so you can kind of see better. But first I just started with one 10 inch stacker and then I thought, oh, I think I want a little bit bigger quilt. So I just went ahead and ordered another stacker so that I can make a bigger quilt. But um, I just wanna show you how fun and fast these blocks are. And it's getting close to Christmas, so this is something that you could whip up pretty fast, even table runner or anything like that. So speaking of table runner, you saw this in the opening, but this is the runner with made with my Granny Chic fabric. And that's on the back. And I just think any collection in this crazy paper, this crazy quilt paper looks really fun. So that's kind of a little close up of that. Okay, Cash, I'm gonna set that over there. Okay, so I was, I brought this out to show you, this is the fabric that I'm gonna put on the back of my quilt, and this is the print that I'm gonna use for the binding. But I think these prints are just so beautiful. And so I went ahead and kind of ironed half of the squares on and left some so that I can just show you exactly how I do that. So all you do is there's the shiny side, the print side is up, and you simply Lay it right there. Doesn't matter if the little zigzags are hanging over the edge or whatever, it doesn't have to be perfection, but you just grab your iron, just make sure that the corners are done. And I just do it kind of like this on top of each other. I don't really need to move another one. Okay, let's just do one more. I think y'all know how to iron, but. Just for the sake of. Being, you know, 
covering every detail. I'm just going to go ahead and iron three of them for you. Okay, so once they're ironed like that, it looks like this. Now you can iron them on the wrong side as well, but then just make sure that you iron them all on the wrong side so that all the angles go the same. So either do it on the right side or the wrong side of the fabric, but just make sure you do them all that way. Maybe when I show you the five inch squares, I'll do the wrong side. So um, what I do with that when I cut it apart is I just, let's see, grab a ruler, grab my cutter, and right here on the paper it says cut here first, and then you'll cut here second, and then you can cut these in whichever order. But I usually use one of my smaller mats so that I can just move the mat around seems to go faster. So I just cut those apart. And now since I move my mat like this, I can cut the second line and I can kind of go over here, cut that line. And you don't have to be like exactly on the line, but just as close as you can. It doesn't have to be real perfect for this. And so when I cut it, so you can see the wrong side of the fabrics because that's how we pressed it, but you could iron it on the wrong side so that you could see the right sides out, which might help when you're switching blocks around. So this is what I do when I have them all ironed on, then I lay them out like this in order, just how the paper was like this, so I can see how the block goes together. And then I take it over to my sewing machine and start sewing. So I'll do that in a minute, but first I wanna talk about the five inch size real quick. And um, let's see, let's add those pieces to those. So I made this pillow when my five inch crazy paper came out, out of the five inch size. And for this size, you use the three and a half inch square to trim it up. And this is the trim it ruler right here. It's kind of hard to see. There you go, you can see that better. And this also has 42 pieces in it, five by five. But this was a really fast pillow. I didn't even quilt it or anything. I just, I just uh, sewed five blocks by five blocks, which made it finish at 15 and a half. And then I put a 16 inch pillow form inside because I like a little bit bigger pillow forms in my pillows to make sure they're all nice and stuffed good. And then I just whip stitched it closed. But I thought that was a really fun and fast pillow. It literally took me from cutting to, and you know, a couple hours. So, and then also if you don't want it, so for that, that was my farm girl vintage fabric. Let me pull this whole thing over here. Here's what those blocks look like. So the 10 inch blocks have five pieces. And let me grab a piece of paper out of this one. And the, the five inch blocks are end up being three and a half unfinished after you trim it, have three pieces. So that's what those look like. And you can see that when I go to trim it, you can kind of move the ruler around so that this piece and this piece Move it like that so you can see. This piece and this piece are the same thing, but you can see obviously I pull the ruler over to this side more so that you can get even more shapes. Now when you sew them together, you just turn them and sew them together however you want. So what I do with that is when I want to do it scrappy is I just grab some pieces from my five inch basket and cut a bunch of five inch squares and then make it completely scrappy. So you can totally use your leftovers or you can use five inch squares or 10 inch squares for these crazy papers. But a lot of times I'll have leftover, you know, five or six leftover 10 inch squares or, you know, 10 or 12 leftover five inch squares from a project. And then I put them all together um, just to save in my scrappy stash. And this would be a great great thing to use those leftovers with. So let's go over to the sewing machine and I will show you how I put one of my blocks together.
Okay, so here's my medium design board and I've got all five pieces from the 10 inch paper laid out in their stacks. I keep the paper on until I go to lay out a block on another design board. Now you can just, you know, easily peel off the paper. It's freezer paper. It's not gonna leave any residue on your fabric whatsoever. Some people have asked me if you could reuse these. I suppose you could, but they're already cut up. So it's just gonna take you a long time to kind of fussy cut around them. So, but yeah, freezer paper is known, you know, to be used over and over again. So that would be your choice if you wanted to do that. But there is 42 squares in the package. So, you know, you might have to reuse for just a pillow or two if you wanted to, but I wouldn't uh, do, you do a whole quilt reusing the paper because it's, not fun just cutting out templates. That's why we have rotary cutters. So um, this is my block and what you're gonna do is, oh, let me look this up again. I'm gonna sew two and three together first and then I'm gonna sew it to number one. So I have the one, two, three together and then I'm gonna sew four to five and then that one long line that we cut first will be sewn together. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and letting you know that you don't have to worry about the crazy shape that it's going to end up being. It's supposed to be a crazy shape because that's why you use the eight and a half inch trim it ruler to trim it up. So it's going to end up being a little bit bigger than this all the way around by the time you sew it all together and then you square it up. So your blocks are going to be eight and a half inches and they'll be eight inches finished when you sew them together into your quilt or your runner or your pillow. Okay, so I'm just gonna start sewing. And when I'm lining these up, I just kind of take the middle measurement, you know, because they don't match up exactly like regular patchwork. I am using the quarter inch seam allowance on my seam so easy guide. If you get off on your seam allowance, that's okay. It's not exact, you know, measurements. The thing that you want to remember is to do it completely flat. That's what you want to do is just to do it flat. And so now that I have that one done, I'm just going to run this scrap through. Now I've had a couple of people ask why I'm just using scraps and not sewing my bonus squares and my starters and stoppers like I always do. I'm only doing this for when I'm teaching so that I can just keep you know, keep going with the tutorial so that I'm not doing a secondary project. And to be honest, sometimes those secondary projects are secret sewing and I can't really show you because they're for future publications. And so I'm just using these scraps now. But yes, I do always sew a bonus quilt in between when I'm doing my chain piecing. Now when you're pressing these, you just wanna press to one side. I do not take the time to press these seams open. I don't think they need it. And it doesn't matter which side you press it to because they're going to be, um, they're going to never match up. It's just kind of a crazy quilt, so it's not going to match up. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, so those two are together, and now what I'm going to do is sew these two together. And again, because they don't exactly match, I just kind of take the, take the difference. See, this one hangs over a little bit more. This one hangs... This one's a little bit shorter, so you could turn it around whichever way you wanted so you can make sure that your seams are going flat. Now, I would probably be sewing a couple of these blocks at a time, but again, because it's tutorial time, I'm just doing one. And then for this one, I just press away from this, these two seams. So now I come back up here and I've got this shape and I'm going to sew this to this. This is a really fun block to sew because it's not exact. So don't let it worry you that it's not exact because as a quilter, now we've been taught to sew, you know, to match up your seams and everything, but for this one, you don't have to. That's what makes it really fun. I've always loved crazy quilts, and I'm really having a fun time with this crazy paper doing all kinds of different projects. Okay, so now 
we just have that. And I just kind of center them as best as I can so that one's not super longer than the other one. Now you can see right here, Cass, can you see how that hangs over a little bit right there? So what I'm going to do is let that hang over so that these two line up down here so that I catch that seam as I go along. And the reason I do that is just to make sure that my seam is flat so that I'm not just making a curve into it by trying to make it match up. And if you're worried about that, you could pin it if you wanted to, but you know me, I don't pin unless I absolutely have to. Depends on the project. If it needs pins, I do it, but most of the time, I don't think they do for me. Okay, so then you can just decide which direction you want to press that to. And so literally that's one block finished. And then all you have to do is, I'll, I'll show you how to trim it up when I do my small one, but you just lay, lay the ruler on there and trim it up. And it doesn't matter if you're higher or lower or whatever, because none of the lines are supposed to be straight. So you don't have to worry about the lines on this ruler. It's just the size that you want. So that's that block. And let me show you how I do the five inch. Let me grab this little design board. Okay, so I took three squares because there's three fabrics. And here's your little guide right here that you can see on the back of the paper, but um, it's only three pieces. So knowing you just have to sew two and three together and then sew it to one is really all that you need to know. But it does kind of help when you go to lay it out. So let me go ahead and do that and then we'll get started. All right, here I am with the five inch paper block all ready to go. Now on this one, I pressed them on the wrong side of the fabric, and it could be an advantage or disadvantage. It's a disadvantage because you just have to remember that it's mirrored image from like the block that I didn't press on. But as long as you do them all the same, then you can do that. But I just kind of wanted to try it out and show you because the advantage is I you can turn them around and design them meaning you can put all of the papers together knowing which one is going to go to which before you take the papers off. So whichever way you want to do it, I know that was kind of confusing, but I just always like to show you the options. Uh, for me personally, I would continue pressing on the right side and then just like this and then just peeling off the papers when it's time. Okay, so for this one, let's get this peeled off. And again, this one goes really fast because there's only three pieces. So I'm going to sew that to that. And a little scrap in between. I like to do that because saving on thread. And sometimes, you know, your machine comes unthreaded and stuff like that, and that's kind of a pain, so. Okay, so I've got this little section here coming right back over, and I'm just going to sew it to here. Now, again, I'll show you this. Maybe you can see this better because it's a little bit darker colors against here, but see how this hangs over here? I wouldn't worry about trimming that even or anything. You don't want to do that because you don't want to make your block too small for the trim it ruler. So all I do is I line it up with the smallest one right here and see I have this hanging over and I will just follow that line from in here. Meaning I start with the green, whoops, right there and that yellow hangs over a little bit. But you can see how this is lined up down here and this is the one quarter inch seam allowance. So then I just follow this line and kind of ignore this that's hanging over. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a lot of explaining for such a little, little block, but 
a super quick and easy one of that too. Okay, so now I go ahead and press towards the piece that does not have a seam. You can use the clapper if you want to, but for right now, I just want to show you how I trim this up. And this, this goes the same for the eight inch. These are already trimmed up, but so what I do with that, here, let me push this truck a little bit, push that over. Now you've got your trim it ruler. For this size, you have a little bit more room than you do for the bigger size. You could turn your ruler this way, turn your ruler that way, you know, come down this far so that you get, even out of those three shapes, you get a lot of different shapes. Or you could have a lot of green, just a little bit of yellow, and whatever you want to do. You don't have to exactly center it. So what I do is I just put it on a smaller mat and so that I can just turn the mat. And I just go overhead and trim all four sides. And I have this cute little three and a half inch block. And when you go to sew them together, you don't want to sew them all going the same direction so that it looks too uniform. You want to turn them around and it doesn't matter if some of the fabrics are the same touch or anything like that. It's just going to look really, really pretty. I'm, I'm really going to love this Jane Austen one. It's going to look very, very uh, primitive and primitive fancy, I guess is the word I would use. And you can just you know, turn any way you want. And it doesn't bother me when some of the fabrics that are the same are close together because that kind of just forms a different shape for your eye. And so all you have to do is sew these together and I hope you enjoy today's tutorial and I hope you try these papers. They're really fun, they're really fast, they're really easy. And I hope you like the Christmas quilt that was on my design wall out of uh, Cozy Christmas. That's really fun. And again, that's out of the 10 inch papers. I used all 42 with 42 10 inch squares. So I will be back in a couple of weeks, maybe next week. We'll see how it goes because it is December. And I hope you guys all have a Merry Christmas. And I will chat with you later.